Hey guys, welcome back to Quick Hunts. Today I'll be taking a look at a game I bought on the random, shiny for the PS4. I bought this game on a whim at Walmart for $25. It was in one of those bins where they put discounted games, and it was the only copy I could see. The cover intrigued me, and the fact that it was unknown to me made me want to give it a shot. So, was it worth the $25 I spent? First and foremost, the story is about robots that work on a factory planet known as Aurora, when suddenly the planet is in chaos. Now our robot buddy, Kramer227, who looks like he got lost off the set of Rebu, has to save his friends and help them escape. Not a super deep story, but it does what it needs to do. However, because the cutscenes have no dialogue, they can drag. Luckily, they are skippable. The game is a 2.5D platformer made in the same vein of games such as Donkey Kong Country. It is a standard platformer with puzzles and challenges. There's a few levels that are chases, but for the most part, it's classic platforming. The DKC comparison goes much deeper, as this game not only has very good visuals for a 2D platformer, seriously, this game looks like it actually belongs on the PS4, but the platforming is very much like it. It's hard to explain, but go a few rounds with Shiny and then play DKC1 and you'll see what I mean. Not to mention, the game's aesthetic reminds me of the factory levels from the Donkey Kong Country series, and I've always loved those stages. Controls-wise, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Your character drops like a ton of bricks, so platforming needs to be precise. And sadly, it's not always as simple as that. Hitboxes are all over the place, and it sometimes feels like the game lacks polish. However, being an indie game, I'll give it some slack in that department. The controls themselves, however, are responsive and work fairly well. You have standard controls like jumping and movement, but then there are other aspects, such as being able to move the camera to avoid taking leaps of faith. Honestly, in most cases, the platforming is a solid challenge, when it's not an issue of polish. The game also changes things up by including some special abilities, such as an energy shield, temperature gauge, which I could not figure out for the life of me how it works, and later, a jetpack. Of course, these require energy to use, which is also your health, and the only way to recharge your energy is at checkpoints, which have a limited amount of charges. Be careful though, as the number of charges also relates to how many times you can revive at a checkpoint. Run out of charges? It's game over. Energy can also be earned by rescuing your fellow robots or collecting energy capsules throughout a stage. Then there is a power meter that when fully charged can be used to go invincible for a short amount of time. The game is filled with all sorts of platforming obstacles like falling rocks, moving platforms, and of course, instant death pits. It also introduces some interesting elements, such as a moving platform where it auto-scrolls to the right but can be moved up and down to avoid obstacles. The game has about 21 levels, with some stages lasting a few minutes, while others last about, uh, 10 seconds. As with any platformer, there are some stages I liked, and some I didn't. The fire stages, for example, were a pain, since I could not for the life of me figure out how the temperature gauge ability worked. And I ended up mashing the shoulder buttons in an attempt to cool Kramer down. This process took sometimes a few minutes, so when I inevitably died shortly after that, I'd have to go through the whole process all over again. This was not fun. Despite a few stages, most of the game was fun and challenging. Earlier I mentioned the visuals, and yeah, this game looks really great. It's not the most graphically impressive thing I've ever seen, but it definitely shows what the PS4 is capable of. The dark and gritty atmosphere matches the tone and feel of the game perfectly. Later levels have a more high energy feel, really displaying the sense of urgency for getting off the planet. Sound is also well done, with sound effects sounding effective for what they need to display. The robotic sounds are very authentic sounding, as well as the machinery and industrial sounds of the stages themselves. Music is both somber and upbeat style techno and electronica, adding to the game's aesthetic. I'm also impressed by the cutscenes and how they can convey all you need to know without any dialogue. All cutscenes are done in engines, so they aren't big sweeping CGI wonders, but it's still impressive given the sheer scope of them. However, like I mentioned before, they can overstay their welcome. That being said, there are actually not that many cutscenes in the game, so it's not like there's much to sit through in the grand scheme of things. Without spoiling it, the ending is bittersweet, continuing the lonely feeling of the game. Shiny was a fun game to play through. It's definitely got some issues that some might find too annoying to overlook, but there's a real diamond in the rough with this one. That being said, was it worth the $25 I paid for it? Well, I'd have to say it's a bit pricey for something that's an obvious budget indie title, but if you can get the game on sale, I've seen it go for as little as $149, then I'd say it's worth it under the $15 range. Anyways guys, thanks for watching another Quick Hunts review. Sorry this one took so long to come out. Just with Anime North, E3, Canada Day, and my birthday coming up, I've been quite busy. That being said, if you like what you saw, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell to get notifications. And if you'd like to support my channel, get early access to videos, and behind the scene extras, consider backing me on Patreon. You can find me on Facebook at Zero Master Fan Page, follow me on Twitter at Zero Master, and I stream Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8.30pm Eastern Time on Twitch.tv slash Zero Master. If you're hungry for more content, consider watching one of my other reviews on the left, or check out our tribute to Best of the Worst, Top of the Bottom, on the right. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.